Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Global Ship Lease Inc., ticker symbol GSL. At the time of recording today's video, GSL is trading for $19.54 per share. Year to date, they've had a rough 2022 so far. Their stock price is down about 20%. Over the past year, they're down about 6%. Going back three years, however, they're up 41% compounded annually, so they were coming off a massive low. Over five years, that's 15.5% compounded annually that they're up. However, going back 14 years ago to when they listed during the global financial crisis, their stock price has seen these huge swings up and down, highlighting the cyclical nature of the global shipping industry as a whole, and their stock price, since they were publicly listed, is down by nearly 66%, down two-thirds from what they initially IPO'd at. Currently, they're trading between their 52-week low and their 52-week high. They're about $5 over their 52-week low and about $10 under their 52-week high. 7% of the company's shares outstanding are currently sold short, and the business has a $680 million market cap. For some background about the business, Global Ship Lease Inc. operates in the container shipping industry. The company owns and charters out container ships under long-term fixed-rate charters to container liner companies. The majority of the company's revenues are derived from charters to CMA, CGM. As of March of this year, its fleet consists of more than 65 mid-sized and smaller container ships. The company was founded in 2007 and is headquartered in London, England. So for today's fundamental analysis, we're going to be performing a modified version of the eight pillar analysis popularized by Everything Money, taking a look at eight key financial metrics of their business to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of global ship leases fundamentals based off those financials. So let's get right into it. Starting off with pillar number one, we want their average PE over the past five years to be below 22 and a half. Currently, they're only trading at just under three times earnings. Over this time frame, their PE has bounced around and has been all over the place. They had negative earnings from fiscal 2017 till about the middle of 2020. They peaked at a PE of about 31 in July of 2021. Over this time frame, however, they're trading at about an average of five times earnings. So this is relatively cheap compared to the average PE of the overall market. However, that doesn't really mean anything. So this is going to be our first check starting off on pillar number one. Pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business is going to return, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So in the case of global ship lease, their returns on capital have bounced around over this time frame. They started off at 11% in 2017. That dipped down to about a 5% return on capital in 2018. And since then, they've been steadily increasing it. Last year, they had returns on capital of just under 13%. Look at their trailing 12 months. They've actually produced 17% return on capital. So this has been continuing to improve even till today. Over this time frame, they've averaged a 9.4% return on capital, which is just above that metric we were looking for. So this is going to be our second check here on pillar number two. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. They've more than doubled revenues over this time frame from $159 million in 2017 to more than $402 million in 2021. Another check here on pillar number three. Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. They had negative net incomes in 2017 and 2018. However, since that time frame, they've produced positive net incomes. And last year, they produced $171 million of earnings. So this is another check here on pillar number four. So far through four pillars, we've got four checks. So we're starting off strong here. Pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. So we've only got data in four out of these five years. We don't have this data from 2018, which probably represents some sort of restructuring. Otherwise, that's just an error with ticker. But this is a pretty horrible sign to see here. Over this time frame, they've increased their shares outstanding from just under 7 million to about 35 and a half million. And actually, in the most recent 12 months, they've increased their shares outstanding even further to more than 37 million. So this is horrible dilution here. 
They've diluted existing shareholders by more than 500%. This is a terrible sign to see on pillar number five. This is going to be a really bad X. If you had been a long-term holder of this business, even though they've increased their earnings over this time frame, the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to have gone down by almost 80%. So that is not a good sign to see here at all for long-term shareholders of GSL. Next up, pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. It says column here in green. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business and can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, or reinvest back into the business. A business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. So looking at their free cash flow profile here, in the four years leading up till 2021, they were producing positive free cash flows. However, last year they spent a massive amount on capital expenditures. They spent more than half of their current market cap on CapEx last year alone, which is a huge percentage for any business. So they consumed about $207 million of cash last year. So that is way down compared to these other years where they were spinning off free cash flow. So this is going to be another X here on pillar number six. The only consolidation we have here is that their cash from operations has more than quadrupled over this time frame and that currently the business is earning pretty nice returns on capital. So these capital expenditures, if the business is able to earn those high returns on them going forward, are actually going to continue helping the business grow into the future. Unlike a lot of their global shipping peers, if they're able to invest a lot of money into their business and earn above average returns on capital, then that's actually a strong sign for the long-term growth of the business. However, keep in mind that the global shipping market is highly cyclical in nature and has a lot of these booms and bust cycles that have gone back over the past 50 years plus. And it could be a very bad mistake for a company in a highly cyclical industry to be investing so much CapEx if we're at the top of a cycle. I'm not saying one way or another that we are. That's something that only a true expert in the global shipping market would know. And so that's something that you would absolutely 100% want to do more research on before feeling comfortable investing into global ship lease. You'd want to determine the supply and demand factors that are impacting the market, as well as the lead time for how quickly companies would be able to bring additional supply into the market if that is a current bottleneck. Again, though, this is our second X on pillar number six, and so far through six pillars. We started off hot with four in a row, but the last two have been Xs, so we are four for six. The last thing to mention here is that due to their negative free cash flows in 2021, in an average year, they're actually burning about $6 million of cash, and so that's going into their cap apps. Next up, pillar number seven, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term cash equivalents, to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five to help us evaluate how the business is utilizing leverage. So currently, because of last year, Global Ship Lease is producing negative average free cash flows. So they have net debt of almost $1 billion, which is more than their market cap. And with that average negative free cash flow, this pillar is going to be an X as it's just too difficult to reasonably evaluate. Then finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want their market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20 to give us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of the business. Currently, they have a market cap of $680 million. However, this is the same situation as with their net debt. Because the business is producing negative average free cash flows, it's gonna just be too difficult for us to reasonably evaluate their market cap. And so this is going to be another X here on pillar number eight. Lastly, Global Ship Lease currently pays out a 6% dividend yield, which is well above the average in the market. So here we're looking at their dividend profile. We want businesses who are paying out dividends that are supported by their free cash flows. And while Global Ship Lease has produced a good amount of free cash flow per share in the years leading up to last year, because they had such high capital expenditures last year, they produce negative free cash flows while still paying out a dividend. Optically, this looks like an interesting capital allocation decision. And again, it's difficult to judge whether this was a good or bad use of capital to return this to shareholders without digging into the business in more depth. Ideally, we want a business's dividends to be supported by free cash flows in all of the years that they're paying it out. 
And so their dividend payments, because it only really started last year and had not had a track record up to this point, are going to be pretty uncertain going into the future. You're really going to just have to learn more about the business to determine whether this is going to be sustainable or not. So in summary, Global Ship Lease Inc. checks the box on four out of eight pillars. They started off strong. However, we ran into trouble with some absolutely horrid shareholder dilution. Then the business is investing extremely heavily into their CapEx. They spent more than half of their current market cap in CapEx in last year alone. So this really threw off the remainder of our analysis. In addition to this, the business is currently paying out a 6% dividend yield. That again, based off their CapEx investments, is not currently supported by their cash flows, but would have been by some of the past years, yet not all of them. So in summary, this is a mixed bag when it comes to global ship lease. Keep in mind that this type of analysis is a holistic beginning understanding of the business based off their financial fundamentals. It is not financial advice, and it is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. If you're interested in global ship lease, I highly recommend learning more about the business. Dive into their 10K and just do everything you can to learn more about the company and the global shipping market in general. And before making any sort of investment decision, please consult with the proper financial professionals and legal experts. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Global Ship Lease Inc., ticker symbol GSL. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about global ship lease with me and have a great day.